Thank you. Uh, let's dive in. I have a lot to say, so uh, I, have, um, I won't bore you to death, I hope. So yes, I'm, I'm Daniel. I've started the Carl Project. Actually, we are turning 24 years old soon. And I started working with HTTP and cli uh, client-side HTTP actually already before that. So I've, I've done my share of HTTP and stuff like that. Nowadays, I work for Wolf SSL and I do Curl support. I work on Curl full time. So today I am going to try to address this uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about curl and rust and of course curl is C it is it has a stable API and ABI a little bit about that something about backends and the architecture of curl and how we and I did an HTTP backend and how there are other backends and in particular then rust in related to that and some of the challenges that we've had and we still have and a little bit about where we are and something maybe about where we're going uh, and all of that in i don't know how how long uh, if i'm if i'm getting too long uh, we can just hurry it up so anyway uh, since it's really hard to take questions during this presentation i hope you either just throw out the questions in the chats and we we get them to them afterwards I'm not going to read the chat while I'm doing this presentation. So uh, I'm not going to interact. So if in case I'm terribly out of line, I hope someone will interrupt me or throw a question at me. So anyway, curl then, the command line tool and the library is written in C and it has been in C since, well, almost since this picture was made. <clears throat> and back in the day when we started, I, I started, well, the first project that actually curl comes from started in, in late 1996 and at back at that time there really was no other alternative and especially um not for doing very portable stuff and then for doing portable libraries um and actually i would say that it was uh, this the only sane choice for a library language for a very long time and it's also that way that C has kept and made curl extremely portable. We're counting 86 different operating systems that curl has run on. And, and uh, I think it's 22 different CP architectures. So it's literally running everywhere, thanks to it being in C. And while we're now talking about uh, doing things uh, or components, parts, backends in, in Rust, the C code will remain a build option for all the different things. There. And I'm going to show you how it works. So um, primarily here, then we're, we're talking about, and I'm, when I talk about curl, I didn't really get into it here, but curl, you know, to most many people see curl as a command line tool that you can type curl in a URL and it'll get the URL for you and, and throw out, out all the garbage in your terminal, but, um, or upload it, or and it handles 26 different uh, URL scheme protocols. But primarily curl is the library lib curl, right? And for libcurl, it is very important um, to do stuff uh, in a stable way. We want to be this stable bridge that remains like this uh, even when we go forward. So libcurl provides an API that is compatible and forward. For, I mean, a stable API that you we don't break. We don't break the ABI ever. We haven't changed it uh, for over 15 years at least. And that means that you can bring your code <laughs> actually the same libcurl using code to a lot of different platforms and it just works there and if you've written your code and you bring it on even when you upgrade libcurl it will still remain working exactly like it did before because we don't break the api we don't change the behavior if you built it with the same stuff it'll work the same way so basically the api and the abi that's the front the i call it armored here uh, that's the front that we don't tamper with right we provide that API and ABI, but behind that, we can do whatever we want. And of course, all of this has sort of the, the, the stability, the av availability and the age of curl and libcurl has made it into somewhere around 10 billion installations worldwide today, maybe more. It's really hard to estimate accurately, but of course, we have also had our share of vulnerabilities in the project and in libcurl and estimations or rather calculations done by me says that roughly 50 percent of the past vulnerabilities have been due to what i call c mistakes those are you know the the obvious ones that is 
they, they are you know buffer overflows or uh, things like uh, null pointer mistakes and stuff that are clearly th things that are related to the C language. So there's there's an opportunity here to to work on, or at least those could be fixed by using another languages, another language, right? So memory safe languages could help definitely with those fifty percent, possibly with others too, and of course. There are other mitigations to do besides considering memory safe languages we can do other things to, to to reduce the risk going forward and of course um i think my prediction of the future is of course that we are going to do even more we're going to have more internet more internet connected devices and more curl in those internet connected devices so i think we're only going to grow in in terms of usage and you know the risk vulnerabilities might impose uh, on us on the future okay that's a little bit so in curl and lib curl we have this concept we call backends and backend is a term we use it's basically a selectable alternative implementation when we select those backends at build time so you build curl with a bunch of selectable alternatives and um Backends that then you can then select them or you can deselect them because you can select maybe maybe I don't want this particular support at all so I don't have to have any let's say SSH support then I don't pick any SSH backend and um, some of the backends are platform dependent so we can use uh, platform specific libraries for example if you run on a particular operating system we might use that operating system's uh, TLS. Uh, support. For example, we can build with S channel on Windows so to use the, which is the crypto SSL library that Windows provides. That's only available on Windows. So on other platforms, we can select that. Uh, and a lot of those backends then use third party libraries that are libraries that provide things that, that we on author, right? So we can actually today support a lot of different third party libraries. So when you build curl, you select from a plethora of different uh, available components and everything of that creates one lib curl that you then use and ship so all of these can then differ in features licensing and very much in maturity some of them are very old some of them are very new and of course then these different backends or actually the third party libraries behind them they can be done in in any language it doesn't matter to libcurl really or it doesn't have to matter at least and because we have these layers and we have the internal apis that they're not exposed externally as long as we provide a stable api and abi we can we have the liberty and freedom to change the internals right so we can swap out stuff internally replace it with something else as long as we maintain the api and abi and that is what we're trying to do so basically the opportunity or what we're providing here is this if you look at this third like i call it the third party world map um this it says february so i'm a little ahead of my time but uh, it, all the green boxes here are different third party libraries that uh, libcurl can be built get built to use they are 35 different ones um and they mostly can select them on and off. You can't have all of them because some of them are mutually exclusive, but there's a lot of them to select. And we have then, as you saw, then different boxes. So we have many different flavors of backends. Basically, you can select different backends for IDN, that's uh, international domain names. You can select different ways to do name resolving, different ways to do TLS, SSH, HTTP3, or, or content encoding for HTTP which is uh, pretty much compression or decompression uh, and of course http and http being the latest one and i'm going to get into most about http because um, that's sort of what i did most work did the most work on recently so basically it's a pick and match thing so when you build curl there's a lot of different components you, that you can select from and all of those together provide that uh, api and api oh right I, I wanted to then so since we're talking about rust in curl here i just wanted to emphasize that we have rust components available for these three different backends for tls for hp3 and quick uh, 
and HTTP, and HTTP then being HTTP one and HTTP two actually. But let me show you how it works. So we, I, this is actually work sponsored by ISRG and there's their Prosima project, which is an, a project that ISRG is running to provide more a memory safe alternative for different projects. So anyway, this is how the libcurl system works. So there's a library API and it, there's, you know, generic stuff for doing trans network transfer since libcurl can do network networking using, as I said, a lot of different protocols. So there's a lot of generic stuff for doing networking that aren't necessarily related to, to HTTP. But so there's, you know, you have to create and reuse connections. There's a transfer engine that basically handles data transfers up and down and all metadata and, and well, fiddling with protocols in, in different ways. And then there's specific implementations for specific protocols. So the HTTP implementation is this big green box. And this is how, how it used to work. And the HTTP, um, doing HTTP with libcurl before we started to talk about introducing a Rust component. But you know, HTTP is a lot of things. HTTP is a fairly complicated protocol. I would say fairly, it's actually very complicated. There's, and there are a lot of different things involved when doing HTTP, like authentication. You have to create headers to, to in, the, in the request to send. There's a lot of proxy specific things. If you want to do uh, networking uh, over a proxy, you have to parse content headers that are related to the actual content that is tr transferred over HTTP. And you have to parse and handle transfer related headers because um, the headers are basically split and mixed be um, between regarding the content and regarding the transfer. And then there's HTTP one, and then there's the completely different HTTP two transmission. So there's a lot of, there's probably more than this, but the, at least these. And if we're then, so when we brought Hyper, which is then the Rust uh, alternative here, brought Hyper into the mix, let's support Hyper as an alternative, uh, an alternative HTTP implementation in curl. So let's do that. But of course, Hyper is very transmission focused. So it, Hyper doesn't actually support everything we need for HTTP. So these four top uh, things, basic authentication and some of the request headers, a lot of proxy stuff and, and uh, content uh, parsing uh, is not what Hyper provides. But Hyper provides more focused transmission stuff for HTTP 1 and 2. So basically what I've then proceeded, pretty straightforward. All of that, that um, all of those things in HTTP that Hyper doesn't support for us, like authentication and proxy stuff. And we, I made that into a generic part of, of libcurl HTTP code and then split out the different things that Hyper can do. So we can, instead of using the native code to, do, to parse transfer headers and to handle the transmission, we switch to use the Hyper code instead. So basically that's the little, you know, go that way, go that way. That's the fork in the road internally. So when you build curl, you can build with Hyper or you can build with the native code and we, it will go the either other way uh, at runtime then. Easy peasy. So when you want to build curl with Hyper, you just run configure with a different option and it'll use Hyper then instead of the native code. So then, then makes it, um, well, make it has the high level exactly what i just said i showed you another version of the same slide so th there's a high level H hp and the two different back ends basically and just showed the same thing again and so when we speak as an app we have an application the yellow one here when it talks to to libcurl it talks through the public api and that the public api remains the same stable one uh, that has been in use for for, for decades and then the, we have the core curl, libcurl, and the core libcurl has an internal HTTP API internally that it uses for everything that is HTTP. And that in turn then can select code between the built-in one or the hyper one. Uh, this particular image I'll show you because it, we will come back to, to the extended version of this. Because at the same time, that's how we did it. That's how I split out the HTTP one. And I did this mostly last year. This um, I'll get back to the status. It's not completed yet, but there are other Rust-based components or backends in curl then 
Russell's being one. Um, so we support a lot of different TLS backends in curl. So you can select which of the different TLS options you want to go with when you build curl. And since, uh, well, I think it's pretty much a year ago now, we can build curl with Russell's as well, well or as an alt one alternative. And we do this, of course, by Russell's uh, providing a C API um, by their Russell's FFI component. So basically, I just have to make sure that, um, and, and this is how we do all this support, right? So for the support for all these different Rust components are, are supported by the Rust components providing a C API or a C API binding to their Rust library. And then in the Russell's case, it's called Russell's um, FFI. And we, of course, already supported a lot of different TLS libraries. So adding support for another one like Russell's, that was actually fairly easy. And it was especially easy for me because I didn't write it. <laughs> so it was Jacob of, um, uh, well, he's one of the head guys at Russell's, right? So he, he, he wrote most of that. Um, so it was just adding support for another TLS library into curl. We, I, as a user or as a contributor to curl, writing curl code here, we don't really have to care about that being Russell's, uh, well, sorry, that being Rust in, in the back or, or somewhere along the way, because all we see when we write curl code, we see the C API, so we interface with that. So for us, it looks exactly like any other library. A third Rust written library that we support is Quiche. Maybe not uh, as familiar to everyone. Quiche is a HTTP3 and Quick library. And yes, we support multiple HTTP3 and Quick libraries as well. So you can select which backend to use when you build curl. And, and in this case, we're actually even more sort of complicated here because they're all experimental because Quick and HTTP3 are all experimentally supported in curl. So you actually, they're never enabled by default. You have to enable them. Uh, in the build by by will because eh, it's a bit of a uh, you know a bit of a I don't know uncertain state or early days at least I should say so and again here Kish provides a C API in in their in from their end so we interface that C API we curl interfaces that C API and that in turn then uses that library written in Rust. And as I said, we curl already built and support different quick libraries. So we just made sure that we could interface this particular library as well. This was actually the first quick library curl supported. And then you have to enable it at build time and then it just works, hopefully. There are some, some, <laughs> some uh, details about that, but I'll, I'll, I'll get around to that because I'm going to talk to you a little bit also about a little bit about status around these different things. So um, this makes it work like this. So here, here, here we're back to this image I wanted to show you about libcurl backends because you know I told you about we have seven different flavors, if you will, of backends. So uh, all of those are hidden behind the internal API. So if again here, if you're the application in in the upper yellow cloud here that's the application using the library and so the library provides that public api the stable api that we don't change the abi is is there forever so that's that's rock solid right but all these little orange boxes here they are providing an internal api and we can change that api doesn't have to be stable it's not so we can sort of we can play around with it as much as we want and change it and, and advance it and, and grow it when we want to but behind those orange boxes are different in many cases, different third-party libraries that then actually provide the, the real power. Um, and those can very well be written in Rust, of course. And, and you, you see, yeah, there, there are a lot of different things, but we can just look at this. So these three different sort of exits then, if we, if we look at the left, that's the HTTP3 API, and we have on the top right, that's the HTTP API, and, the, and the, that, that's the TLS API. So there are different Rust alternatives for those three, which then, of course, uh, implies that there are no Rust alternatives for those other four um, backend options. But, but of course, this is all based on 
you know, history and availability and um, what people have done and not done, of course, um, and maturity. A lot of these uh, are, are old things that have just been around since forever. So uh, have, I guess there haven't been a real um, option or, or, or opportunity for anyone to provide Rust alternatives for those. <clears throat> so that is how we are getting Rust components into this very old project that is uh, uh, on, a, on a lot of places. But of course, getting all this working hasn't been, well, it has actually, it hasn't been very complicated uh, sort of, of the, from the greater point of view, but, it, but there, have, there are and have been some challenges. And maybe maybe some other, so I'm, I'm talking about three different backends here, all written in Rust. So I've split it out here on, on, and I want to talk about specific backends. Of course, uh, one of the challenges, of course, being the first user of, of something like the hype, hype. Actually, when I contacted the Hyper guys and, and Sean MacArthur then in particular, I asked them, wow, how's, uh, how's your C API? How can I use your library? And he said, well, we will make one for you. So I, I I don't know if I'm still the only user of it. I, I really hope I'm not, but I was certainly the first one. And being the first one, of course, I, I mean, I won't complain because it's awesome to get the attention and get all the help you need. And they're super cool in the project. So uh, no complaints from me, but it still was, it means that well, I'm early and the API certainly didn't have everything that we wanted. And I had to sort of ask for things and it was a fairly complicated story to actually figure out how it works because yeah, headers only no C documentation. So reading the headers, trying to understand how the API is working, that was actually pretty complicated. It's still pretty complicated if you want to use this API because it's uh, from uh, from an old, I, I mean, you know, as I implied with what I've said already, I'm an old C user, um, API user since, decades and i'm sort of accustomed and used to how to do things and how to access apis and i think rust is sort of uh, encourages a way of thinking and a way of doing things that uh, sort of makes the api maybe not appear in a sort of how we are used to have apis for c programs and c libraries so it's a little bit of an unusual thing i'm not sure if that's rust or hyper but anyway this api at least surprised me in, in, my, in, my, in many ways. I had to sort of learn how it actually works and it took some serious uh, getting used to from, from my point of view. So yeah, and, and splitting that HTTP, as I said, uh, as I talked to you about before, splitting up HTTP in, in an upper layer and a lower layer, I hadn't really had that in my mind before. So it took some thinking and there are also some, still some challenges in, in hyper not doing and considering HTTP the same way as libcurl native does, but we're getting there. Um, right. And, and uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a journey to make sure that, you know, curl has, uh, is an old beast. It will, it has its ways and it's been doing things just because we did it that way back in the day. I can't even remember why we did some of those, uh, you know, uh, Option, why we selected to do things the way we did, but we do now and we want to maintain that behavior. That means we need to make sure that Hyper can also support those quirky old ways. And that's a, sometimes a bit of a journey. I could say that um, when we have these number of layers of uh, different systems in place, and in particular when we have, um, for me as a total rookie and, and uh, <laughs> I'm sitting here at the Rust uh, uh, presentation, right? But I'm not a Rust guy. I don't know Rust at all. I've sort of, I can maybe read some of it, but most of it, it just flies over my head. So I'm not a Rust guy. And when it comes to memory leaks and this unusual API for, for, the, C, uh, for the C API here in, in Hyper, it, it can sometimes be a journey to figure out um, why the memory is leaking and, and what I'm supposed to do to make sure that it doesn't leak. So yeah, uh, but but the fact that is in the end, that the fact that it is rust in the back there is mostly seamless and we usually don't have to care as long as sort of everything works. And, and I mean, that's the post 
that's how it's supposed to be. Um, and then heading and uh, going forward then into Russell's being another separate Rust uh, component. And of course, all of these different backends and components, you can select them. They're sort of individually selected. So you can select a build curl with all of these three different Rust components at once, or just one or two. Uh, and that was also a problem in the beginning too, because uh, there were some global uh, symbols that collided. But anyway, we're still uh, again here. We're early users of the Russell's FFI, which is the C, then the C front end to Russell's. And again, being an early user is difficult because eh, recognize a pattern here. Headers only, no C docs. So figuring out exactly how this works is not exactly straightforward all the time. So yeah, I can read the Rust documentation, but mapping the Rust documentation to the C world is not always you know, straightforward. But in this case, mo this work was mostly done by others. So this was certainly easier for me because I didn't do most of this work. It was mostly done by Jacob and others. So easier. And the TLS backend situation in curl was already mature. mature. Actually, at this time, we already supported uh, 13 different TLS backends. So this became the 14th. Um, so it was mostly, you know, adding another one in an uh, already very established way how to add TLS backends. So straightforward, could hook it in into the test suite. We could go get it going very quickly. But this, uh, I didn't say that. Uh, the, the, the Russell's um, is not yet feature complete, not the back end in curl. And, I'm, and um, I'll get back to some detail why Russell's isn't feature complete in the library either. And of course, then the third Rust component, Quiche. And again, early user of Quiche. I don't know if we're the only, if we were the first user of the library outside of, this is done by Cloudflare, by Alessandro and, and uh, Lucas there. Um, and this familiar pattern, you know, headers only, no C code. Uh, so sorry, no C documentation. Um, so it's a little bit hard to understand how to use it sometimes. And adding, uh, adding in this world, we have a messy TLS situation. And this is this isn't really the fault of Quiche. This is the fault of Quick in general because Quick, eh, let's not get into that. But you cannot use any particular, just any TLS library for this. So there's a special situation for TLS when using Quick, and that, of course, sort of taints Quiche a little bit, or the situation with Quiche, to build with Quiche and stuff like that. And Quiche also is not an, or has not been feature complete. So it, like all these other three, it's a, it's a back and forth, you know, implementing supporting curl, to going back to the developers of the project, uh, submitting features, uh, submitting issues, and sort of, back and forth to sort of hand in hand, go forward to make sure that they provide the features we need to do the things so that we can provide everything in, in curl, exactly. So then uh, using Rust in general, of course, it's, it's a, it's a uh, for me, it's a sort of a wake up call. Oh, sorry, I have to do Rust up, uh, update and cargo update all the time. And I have to, um, but I have to say that it's, it's really a suitable, language it works really great for for in for this in this case to just replace the components one by one or or provide alternatives provide alternative components one by one in a project like curl even if it curl has existed since forever we can this is a pretty smooth ride actually or as smooth as you can get i guess even if there are some bumps along the road but the bumps i mean no matter what, in, 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 even if they, these components had been written in other languages, there would have been bumps and um, there haven't been any larger or, or com really complicated things. And of course, the parts of it is because I'm personally, I'm, I'm, I'm leading the curl project and I'm a total Rust rookie. So I, I don't know a lot of, which is sort of sometimes bad for me because when I run into a problem with one of these libraries, so I load up the, the source code, the Rust source code, and I try to figure out mm, what's wrong here. And uh, so yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a tough road sometimes for me. Anyway, 
we're getting forward in this um, this uh, sort of in this area and i uh, just wanted them to get into some of the status right now because we've been doing this for a while and uh, sometimes it goes fast sometimes it goes slow uh, when it comes to progress <laughs> sometimes it goes slow because we're not enough developers doing things uh, like this uh, in the project but anyway so this the status for hyper right now is that it's labeled experimental and opt-in so uh, if you enable it in the build the build will say hello this is experimental just consider that when you go forward and it it handles http1 and http2 really nice and if you do this if you enable it in your build and you run curl with it as a backend you mostly won't notice it it'll just transparently work exactly like curl does and libcurl does as well uh, for a lot of features like uh, even for http and HTTPS proxies and the HTTP requests are identical, so you won't spot it even if you're watching it over the wire. Well, there might be some. Yeah, well, that's at least what the, all the tests are verifying. So we know that they are uh, the same. And we're at right now at some, I think it's a little bit more than 98% test case success rate. We're I think, well, then I say there's roughly 800 test cases for HTTP. I think there are a little bit more. I think right now we have 24 test cases that are disabled when Hyper is used. And all of those 24 are subject for, you know, addressing one by one. It's a bit of a work. It'll take some time, but um, we're slowly uh, getting there. Um, so Russell's done. Uh, it's uh, also experimental and opt-in, but uh, less experimental and more opt-in. But so since that's a TLS backend, and for TLS backends, people have always, well, since a very long time, been able to select TLS backends at build time. So here you just have to, uh, at will, select the Russell's to build with when you build curl. So it's a, an opt-in. You have to make the decision. and. For Russell's, we have then it's actually 12 test cases, which is half of the 24 in Hyper. So it's even closer to feature uh, perfect. There are some things not, uh, I don't remember right now, but there are some things that isn't really implemented in Russell's yet. I think it's related to some connection thing, which makes some, for example, T uh, FTP TLS doesn't work at all. Uh, mm, uh, right, and then there's this uh, feature uh, thing in Russell's that doesn't work yet, so they can't verify IP addresses in server certification, cert server certificates. I believe I still I think that's still a case. So so if you for example you you want to get HTTPS colon slash slash one 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 one, yeah, it can't verify that. If I I think so, I think that's still a case. And for Kish. That's also experimental and opt-in. And as I said, for Quiche, we have this TLS case, uh, the TLS mess or problem. So it'll take a while until we have we will enable HTTP3 by default anyway in curl. And we don't have an HTTP3 tests yet in curl either, partly because of this TLS situation. And, and well, quick and HTTP3 are still early in general and, and in the ecosystem of, of HTTP and, and open source, it's uh, still in a a little bit shaky ground so we have um, i think we have more time before we sort of feel that we have to be there so in general then about rust it works really well you, you can enable all these three components today and go with it and you probably won't spot any problems with it and of course this depends entirely on the c apis all these three libraries provide so there's a lot of C adaptions, of course, for, to, that in to enable us to use curl this way. And unfortunately, all of these three are still very under documented, which I, uh, of course, it's, it's not Rust's fault at all. It's just that's the status. Um, one thing in Rust, of course, is that you can still not get it to uh, handle out of memory errors in a fine way i say fine because panic is not the fine way to handle out you know if you if you provide a library for an application the the library should never 
panic or abort because that's not the decision for the library. The application that uses the library should select if it should abort or not. The library should return an error. If you can't do anything, if you're out of memory, if you're out of, I don't know, whatever resources or you can't connect or anything, back to error handling, right? So if a library cannot uh, proceed and act what it's supposed to do, it should return an error. It should never panic. And in Rust right now, you can still not prevent it from panicking when it runs out of memory, which I think users of, of libraries for some, at least in, in many situations, um, will not appreciate. And of course, you can help to make this better because this is the state right now, the status. We always need more help in the curl project. And as you can see here, there are Rust and there are C APIs to those Rust libraries to, to work on. And there's adaptions in curl then to use these libraries. So there's there's a lot of different areas. That, you know, you can just join in and help, and you will be appreciated in in any of those areas. I, I guarantee you. So coming up next then in curl and Rust. Um, first, of course, uh, short term. Hopefully short term, I don't know really, <laughs> to make sure all test cases succeed. Uh, so there are, well, maybe 36 test cases to fix them. Uh, I think some of them will be problematic. Some of them will be easy. So in the ideal case, it'll, we will work on this and it'll be, we, we can get there in a, in a month or two or three or who knows. It depends a little bit how much time we and effort we can spend on it. And then verify a few of the libcurl API corner cases that we still maybe not haven't really settled, but otherwise, otherwise we are we're already there. And then, or already now, maybe we can encourage users and developers to actually use these Rust backends, you know, to exercise those and, and to really try them out in, in, in the real world and see what we have missed or forgotten. Because I have this experience when I say things are experimental in curl, people tend to not really use it. So yeah, they're really experimental because nobody has used them. We need to get people to use them as well to actually run them in, in the real world to, to prove that they actually work um, as good as I want them to do, or as everyone wants them to do. Possibly I will start providing some binary builds for this to sort of ease that testing and, and experimenting. But, but also it's also a tough job to provide binary builds. And we have so many different platforms that we support and mm, uh, hopefully someone else than me will help out and provide binary builds. Who know, maybe Docker images. So I get this question uh, then for someone, when, when, will someone at when or will someone enable these backends by default? For example, there could be Linux distributions, uh, operating systems that then select or decide to use these Rust backends by default instead of the other backends. And when they build and ship curl for their uh, operating systems or, or platforms or whatever. And I don't have any real insight into how the thinking is going there or if anyone is actually thinking or planning about that yet. But I think once we have, uh, come to that level of everything being you know not experimental anymore all the test cases are going through and everything is green then i think at least it becomes a serious uh, alternative and option for a lot of these um, uh, distributions for example if they want to i don't i don't i provide all the options they have to make the decisions and Going forward, there could be more Rust components. I've talked to ISRG about that as well and uh, made some proposals. So maybe we'll, we'll see what, what happens down the road. But of course, this, this, is, a, this is open for every, everyone or anyone. If I showed you that sort of how we do different uh, backends in curl, and a lot of those can be done in Rust instead. And the effect of that then being that the final binary that actually runs a lot of networking stuff would be more rust and then more memory safe less c code based stuff in executing which ideally hopefully probably makes things a little bit better and maybe a little less vulnerable going forward so yeah more backend flavors that mean we we could also introduce new things right we could do backends for another 
protocol or another feature in curl that we don't have backends for today, but we can introduce backends. Like we didn't have an HTTP backend a year ago. We created the HTTP backend infrastructure and now we have it. We can do others like that as well. So there's really nothing in the way we just march on. And you know, we've been doing this for a while. Uh, we can continue doing this for as long as we want. Uh, we just march on, we keep the ABI and API and we just get more curl going forward uh, with your help, of course, with everyone's help. This is fun. And I think that's about what I wanted to say today. I hope you uh, haven't all fallen asleep and uh, I'm ready for some questions. <laughs>